www.vision-squared.com. About a quarter of what I write about is criticising flaky science coverage in mainstream media, alongside crimes of big pharma and dodgy government reports and all that sort of stuff. And the, my, 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 my problem with a lot of mainstream media coverage, plenty of it is fine, but my problem with a lot of it is firstly that it gets things straight wrong. And wrong in a way that's, that's so immediately and obviously wrong that you can't help feel frustrated. And then secondly, that things are often quite dumbed down. And I mean dumbed down in comparison to uh, other specialist subjects in mainstream media. What you tend to get is science being presented as uh, conclusions, science being presented as uh, arbitrary truth statements from authority figures in white coats who have the demeanour of a kind of faux emotional neutrality um, of a 1950s B-movie scientist. You know, they wouldn't be emotional with their wife, nor would they be emotional about the experiments that they're conducting, probably on rats, probably powered by lightning. I think there's a real problem when, um, when humanities graduates who know nothing about science <laughs> seek to present themselves as experts and express uninformed views and opinions and also write incorrect facts in very high-status publications. I, I think there's a lot to be said about bringing people who know about stuff in a kind of direct and unmediated way to the public. It's very unusual that it's difficult to explain. Sometimes it just takes time and space. But now we have time and space with the internet for people who are interested. So by all means have the dumbed down stuff for the people who aren't interested, great, fine. But also have the long form, the methods and the results, the working. There are lots of different reasons why people get stories wrong in mainstream media. And sometimes it can be a, 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 something that's sort of very value neutral, a, you know, kind of absence of competence. But often it can be about something a little bit more sinister than that. You know, often I think we have to accept that there is mischief afoot. I think when you look, for example, at, um, at the Daily Mail's coverage of cervical cancer vaccine, there is a, a selection pressure on scientists who go, who appear on mainstream media outlets. And they don't represent what scientists are really like. They represent the people who TV producers and radio show producers and journalists would like to have to conveniently fit into their boxes. But I think also, you know, the, the, the emotionally valenced message of, you know, cancer will be cured is a, is a much more attractive and seductive message for people to write than um, here's what we reckon about gene expression. There's something really interesting happening here with these repeating codons that we can't believe. Firstly, I'm not sure that homeopathy is actually very interesting or important. Like, I don't, think it's, I, don't, I don't think it's important in the sense that lots of people are out there dying or it's terrible that people are being ripped off. I don't care if people are being ripped off. I'm absolutely fine with that because I think it's a slightly more complex cultural process than an exploiter right. and a victim. You know, as we've now said, these are uh, bit, people are throwing themselves willingly into the roads. And they're convinced by it. Yeah, and they love it and it's fine. You know, and it's the same thing when people buy very expensive cosmetics. I don't think it's because they really believe the, the bullshit in the adverts. I think it's because buying very expensive cosmetics is about pampering yourself. It's about displaying to others that you have wealth. It's about saying to yourself that you're going to treat yourself. It's about a whole raft of different things. And I think whether or not the, 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 the hemolyzed beta lytic photogenic mashup textured vegetabilized protein, whatever it is, in the stuff is actually going to do anything to your face. That's pretty low down on your list of reasons why you're actually buying it. Homeopathy is interesting because, firstly, it's a, it's a gimmick to explain the basics of evidence-based medicine. I mean, half of all science stories in mainstream media today are medical, and that's a new thing. In the 60s and 50s, most, medical, most science stories were physics and engineering. It was about how we're all going to the moon. It was about the magnetic levitation car that was always on tomorrow's world and never, um, never seemed to appear. Where is my jetpack? Um, now, about half of all science stories are medical, and it's about the science of what will kill us or cure us. It's the Daily Mail's ongoing philosophical project of dividing all the inanimate objects in the world into the ones that either cause or prevent cancer. Now, there are dreadful problems in the pharmaceutical industry, which I write about extensively, and there are systematic problems in the misrepresentation of scientific evidence, both in, at the level of it being published, but also of it being disseminated with the pharmaceutical industry. But it's, it's, it's so much better than just randomly 
giving people a random dose of stuff that's very poorly specified and understood. So even when you're kind of trying to do it as well as you can, as transparently as you can, with the best possible evidence that you can, you still have occasional cock-ups where it turns out that Fleck and I, dis dis despite appearing to be really helpful for everybody who's had a heart attack, actually turns out to cause 180,000 unnecessary deaths over a couple of years in America. You know, I, I think if you took the kind of working practices of herbal remedies and scaled them up and used them on a whole population, you'd have a hell of a lot more giant cock-ups than that. The crimes of Big Pharma, and, uh, and rather the, 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 in my view, sort of borderline criminal failure of international regulation, is quite a complex and tricky story to explain to people. And I think people have this kind of intuitive, deep-rooted understanding that something quite bad is happening here with Big Pharma, but they, haven't, they can't put flesh on those bones. So instead it kind of bulges out. The story becomes Big Pharma is dodgy with evidence, therefore sugar pills cure cancer. Big Pharma is dodgy with evidence, therefore MMR causes autism. And this kind of pharma bad dolphins and crystal good uh, worldview to me, it doesn't really capture the substance of the problems with the pharmaceutical industry. And, and that's why I think it's particularly problematic, the rise of, of quackery and also these, these rather childish medical scare stories that you get. Because there's this incredibly important, very serious um, you know, public health problem out there, which is the failings of the pharmaceutical industry to, to work transparently with trial data. It's an excellent example, I think, of the, the opportunity costs of bullshit. Because the, the actual cost of the bullshit, I don't care if people give Boots £8.99 for some sugar pills. I just don't care. I, I, I struggle, actually, to, to feel that the homeopaths are responsible when some idiot refuses to treat their child with sort of serious medical problems with anything other than homeopathy and the child dies. I, I find it difficult to blame homeopaths even for that. I think, you know, it's the parents, it's the media that misled them into believing that this stuff worked, it's the therapists, it's Boots, it's all of these people all coming together, you know, and building up the plausibility around this stuff. I don't, I don't blame the individual, I don't see it as exploitive victim. Uh, I, I think the real damage done by, by bullshit is, is the opportunity cost. When you're, when you're dealing with bullshit, you could be dealing with something else. When you're pursuing bullshit as a solution to a problem, you could be pursuing a more meaningful one. And when you're pretending that bullshit is a solution to the serious public health problem in medicine posed by the pharmaceutical industry, then you're failing to address that problem adequately.